Hey guys, this is Jerry Learns Business, and I might put some of this on Fight Commentary Breakdowns too, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But I got Jason, Jason, which means healer, by the way, healer, the mind-body coach. Um, this is Jason. He's the CEO and co-founder of Focus Ball. So I wanted to bring on cool guests to talk about business and all that, so here we are. Um, Jason, aka Healer, welcome. Hey there, everyone. Thank you for having me, Jerry. I appreciate you. I'm a big fan of Fight Commentary Breakdown, and I've been meaning to talk to you for some time. So it's a awesome. pleasure. Yeah. So tell me, that is so cool what you're doing right now. Tell me more about that. So this is the focus ball. Um, and I actually created this after losing a mixed martial arts fight. Mm -hmm. I watched the tape on the fight, and I realized my footwork sucked, my head movement sucked, my reflexes just weren't there. Even though I knew these things intellectually, so I'm like, I'm going to hang up the heavy bag in my room and just drill it and drill my techniques. However, the heavy bag was just too heavy. I couldn't put it up. And I ended up using some materials I had lying around. Mm. And after toying around with it a little bit, a couple months, a couple years, I eventually refined it into this. What the focus ball does is because of the band and um, the style of the band that I use, it reacts to every single thing that I do. Mm. And it makes it very realistic. When you do your moves, it hits back. For example, I can pretend that uh, if I'm throwing a jab, if I don't move, my opponent's going to hit me back, right? Mm -hmm. So it was created to teach you to move your head, teach you to move your feet, mm -hmm. and let your hands go. And practice your technique. That's so interesting. And does it normally come with two balls, two balls in a string? Um. I mean, I have different variations of it. I've actually done up to three balls. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't put, I haven't really sold a three yet, but I originally started with one and two is really my favorite. So when, what I do for instructions is um, for a beginner, I tell them to do this, put it right here and work with one. Mm -hmm. First establish your jab with footwork, jab forward, jab back, jab going uh, left, and jab going right. Mm -hmm. So once you're done with one ball, then you can upgrade to two. Wow. And there is a third, but um, I'm still working on getting good with it. I don't want to show it until it looks good enough. Mm -hmm. But you can also modify this to a leg kick, right? So um, I have the longer band. This is not really one of the long ones. Um, I still have yet to set that up, but... Uh, once I extend the extend the band, it becomes boxing and kickboxing, so I can hit the legs as well. Mm. Wow, that's pretty cool. And does it have an attachment? Like, for example, if you wanted to wear it on your head and like on the, if you let's say you're on the beach or something, does, is there an option like that? So um, I that one is already in existence, ah. and my patent doesn't really cover that. So my product is, I, I've actually tried to make a distinction between the focus ball and that product. Mm -hmm. um, that, I call that one the headband ball, but I've seen people try to use the name focus balls and we're actually speaking to them about that now because it is a trademark name specifically mm -hmm. for this brand. Um, I decided not to go into the headband territory because I'm trying to create something different and uh, unique on its own. Mm -hmm. I like the headband, but you can only do certain moves with it. Yeah. And it's very limited. It's not yeah. as realistic. Yeah. It's more for drilling. Yeah. So check this out. I can simulate uh, my opponent throwing a punch at me, right? Let me move this over a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can simulate my opponent throwing a punch and me throwing a counter cross, slipping, and moving out. Wow. Or I can simulate what would happen if I threw a cross and a hook, then I have to block afterwards. Mm -hmm. and I have to block. There's many different ways. That is so cool. Yeah, it's um, I'm seeing you play around with that, and I can I can see like, it is like next level stuff, man. It's it's so cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I mean, I want to I want this to be a staple of the combat sports world. The likes of a heavy bag, a speed bag, and a, a double end bag. Have you ever seen a double end bag? Um, I. Let me let me look this up right now, just to make sure right I don't say something that this. I am um, double end bag. Let's see this. 
Um, double M. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those. Yeah, it sometimes comes in a in like a pear shape, but it could be like any anything with a little what you might call it band on it. Mm -hmm. I was actually trying to create this when I ended up creating the focus ball. Mm. Wow. So, dude, I mean, we're already learning so much about kind of certain things about business acumen and stuff like that. Tell me about how did you find your partner? You know, because you had a co-founder, right? How did you find your co-founder? So he was a friend from high school and um, he saw it in my house because I was very hesitant to put this out there because I'm like, it's such a great idea. I want to patent it first. And at the time, I, I did not have the finances for it. Um, so what I, um, when we teamed up, he, first he encouraged me to get it out there. Because I, I was trying to at one point, but it, I didn't succeed. And he encouraged me, hey, listen, I'll help you out this time. Um, so he helped me gather the material to make a more upgraded project, a more upgraded version. Because like I said, I had a, um, a, a kind of a sloppy version. So once I got this version, we immediately got the trademark and the patent. And that's my recommendation for anyone who has an idea Get a not get a provisional patent first because it'll allow you to immediately have um, legal protection for it, and then you can upgrade to a patent within a year. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely get your stuff licensed uh, before you put it out there. And that's something I'd say as far as business goes. I see. How hard is it to get a provisional patent? Not hard at all. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it from the USPTO website um, as long as. I mean, as long as your thing is legitimate, then it's not something that already exists. Um, they determined that it was something different enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said I wanted to stay away from the headband thing because that's something very different. This is independent of that. But yeah, it's, it's not as hard. And I think not knowing or not understanding how easy that is deters people. In my case, I didn't want to do it because I just, I thought it was too much and I thought I had to get an expensive look. Dude, you can do it yourself. You don't need a lawyer. Um, Although we did eventually get a legal team, but um, to begin with a non-provisional patent, you can make that yourself. I see. So for example, on certain products that I've bought, it says patent pending. Is that the same as like a provisional patent or is that different? So here's the thing. A uh, provisional patent is, um, yeah, that's what a provisional patent is. But a non-provisional patent, which is a real patent, uh, you can put patent pending because of the process it generally takes several years. Um, but once it's in, uh, which you call it, once you have a filing date, be it provisional or non-provisional, um, you're covered by your filing date. Meaning if something happens, someone uses your idea, um, pretty much you can have an injunction on that. Or what you do is, uh, you, uh, what you call it, they, they resolve the patent and then then I, I don't I don't really know the rest. I'm not really a lawyer. But that's the best of my understanding. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, and guys, for those of you watching, this is just a general discussion, right? This is not supposed to be construed as legal advice or anything like that, just to make it Definitely clear. Not but, a lawyer. You know, it, it's a it's a great kind of general discussion because you know, um I've encountered people who are trying to get patents and stuff. Actually I know a few people are trying to get patents. So it's really interesting to like see that you've patented something and you've gotten provisional patents and everything. And also it's so awesome that like you can like talk and practice and do that. That's what I need to do, man. Um, and for viewers of fight commentary breakdowns, um, I will very likely um, have some of those. And so in the future, as I interview people, I could be doing that too, because you know, here's sometimes when you're talking to people, you want to do stuff, right? But you don't want to like browse on the internet because then you're not paying attention. But, you know, like doing what you do, that's, I need to put that in my room and I just need to be working on my head movement and stuff. It's very addicting. Um, I, I've definitely been pissed off at things before and I'll just start hitting this. And what I realize is that um, it's so repetitive. It's, it's almost like the same thing as mastication when you're chewing um, that repetitive motion. It's, it becomes soothing. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's like some kind of hormonal psychological reason to it. But it kind of relaxes me a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's talk briefly about your martial arts journey. You've told me a lot. Like, you know, um, you've messaged me some really cool stuff, very interesting uh, knowledge about all these martial arts. So tell me more about your martial arts journey. 
So let's see. Um, I began martial arts with pretending that I knew Muay Thai. <laughs> like I would watch uh, uh, Tony Jaa movies, um, The Protector, Ong Bak, and that really made me want to do Muay Thai. And I, I just didn't have the finances as a kid to do it. But I was really good at astrology and a number of other like esoteric things. So I met someone who knew, who knew martial arts and I did readings for him and stuff. And he became my first instructor. Mm. He taught me Taekwondo, um, got really good at it. And I would go to Union Square in the city and I would street fight a lot, like almost every day. I, I still have pictures of it, um, almost like street beefs. Every day I would go there and I would just practice my moves and get into fights and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I learned Wing Chun from the same guy. He taught me, taught me, uh, uh, excuse me, Taekwondo, Wing Chun. Um, I learned Capoeira from doing it pretty much in the streets, uh, going to like local um, demonstrations where they were doing a hora and just hopping in and getting my feet wet and going home and really researching and practicing on my own. Uh, when I became a trainer, I also worked as a martial arts instructor at a karate school where karate teacher taught me to teach the students. And then eventually it was the same thing with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu where they taught me to teach the students. Um, so I learned BJJ and it wasn't until I met one of my, one of my oldest sparring partners. He was a good boxer and I was really good at kicking. So we traded knowledge and I taught him how to, how to kick and he taught me how to punch. So with that, I, um, someone saw me boxing one day and when he saw me hitting the bag at a gym I worked at, he came up to me and started refining my technique and then he became my first legitimate coach. Mm -hmm. um, he taught me how to hold mitts because it was something I was doing as a job, I was a trainer. And he's like, this is probably what you should do when you're holding mitts. And when I learned how to hold mitts, I started to comprehend boxing and fighting. Um, so I got really good at mitt work and that became a job for several years. I ended up working for this group of African martial arts champions. Um, they were champions in Portugal and uh, which we'll call it, and in like West Africa. And they came over here, built a couple of gyms, and I worked in their network. Um, so they refined me and they trained me to be a trainer, to be a boxing instructor. And pretty much we would spar every day. They would have us, they would have all the instructors, all the, um, anyone who comes there pretty much, uh, they would sit me in the center, have someone come in, fight, bang, 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 bang. Next guy, bang, 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 next guy. And I pretty much fight everybody in the gym. And that's how I got good at boxing. And um, tell me about when, when you lost that fight and it made you create focus ball, where was that along in your martial okay. arts journey? Um, this is before I got good at boxing. I was a trainer and I was, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so you can look these guys up. They're called uh, ECF Long Island, mm -hmm. Christian De Ferris. Um, I was teaching kickboxing and there was a promotion going around like people I knew for, for the gym I was teaching at, there was a bunch of fighters. There was a UFC fighter that, uh, that trained there, Oluwale Bamboche. Um, he was in the UFC for uh, a couple fights, mm -hmm. but pretty much I was around a lot of fighters. I wanted to get into fighting. Um, I knew a promoter out in Long Island and I went to his gym, uh, trained there with him for a bit. And I was supposed to be on a card but my fighter pulled out and I was waiting for the phone call. Didn't get the phone call for a replacement opponent. So I was not a good martial artist at the time. And I made the mistake of, Hey, I'm fuck. I'm not fighting tomorrow. So I'm going to smoke up and enjoy myself. I've been good in camp and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I stayed up till 4 AM the night before. And I get a call the next day as I'm sitting on my couch, smoking and making burgers. My coach was on his way over and he's like, we're going to go watch the fight. And I get a call and it's like, hey, uh, the co-main event pulled out. We need somebody. It was supposed to be a title fight. Are you in shape? I'm like, shit, if I'm a fighter, then let's fucking fight. <laughs> so I got some stuff. I, I went to the fight. Um, I ended up losing that fight by decision to a guy from the Sarah Longo Academy. You know Matt Sarah? Yes. Yeah, from one of his guys. Um, wow. So... Whatchamacallit, um, I look back on the tape of that, I, 
I, I wasn't happy with my footwork. I wasn't happy, no head movement, just no jab. So I went home and started practicing this. Mm. Wow. Wow. You know, um, I love that we're having this journey because uh, the beauty of entrepreneurship is that you see an opportunity, you fall down, you get back up, right? And it, it's like you really had that. You lived that. You're just like, okay, I stumbled a little, but how do we make this an opportunity? Um, well, a big opportunity did come from it because uh, despite the fact that I didn't win the fight, it didn't mean it wasn't a great performance. I actually almost knocked him out. I made the mistake of spitting out my mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. um, and I head kicked him and dropped him. And the ref was like, I was trying to pick up your mouthpiece, so um, we're not going to count that. And oh. <laughs> I was so fucking tired. Yeah. I was like, son of a bitch. But um, they, I got a standing ovation from the audience because they heard I took the fight on three hours notice. Yeah. And um, the, the promoter became my coach. He became my jiu-jitsu coach. And he was like, listen, for saving my show, you are welcome to train here for free anytime. Wow. Hit you up, uh, Chris. That's awesome. That's, that's amazing. Also, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but you and Ramsey Dewey have an uncanny Same voice, voice right? resemblance. That's jeez. I thought I was the only one who thought that. Yeah, you and Ramsey Dewey. Like, I, I keep it's hearing Ramsey person. Dewey in your voice, and now when I hear Ramsey Dewey, I'm going to hear your voice too. It's really funny. <laughs> I thought I was the only one that realized that, but yeah. um, he's a little more polite, a little more pleasant. <laughs> I'm going to let him know that I talked to you. You guys should definitely do a talk together. Uh, it'll be so funny. It'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Two Ramsey <laughs> Deweys. <laughs> uh, two healers. Yeah, I fucking love that guy. I'm always watching his channel and yours. Mm -hmm. So um, what is next for Focus Ball? Um, so, um, well, uh, we're doing a promotion campaign. I'm getting together. Uh, new material because there's an upgraded version that I, I want to work with. Um, I don't want to talk about it just yet, but there's an upgraded version we're coming out with, and it's pretty much just about getting rid of my inventory, uh, selling everything I got, and uh, talking to people who want to sell the focus balls in other places, um, as well as uh, what you call it, trying to get it in stores. Like I said, I want it to be a staple of. Combat sports training. You need a speed bag. You need a heavy bag. You need mitts. If you, if you don't have someone to train with, if you don't, if you don't have uh, mitts, someone to hold mitts for you, that's, this is excellent for that. I can practice my moves. Jab, cross, block, hook, cross, duck, slip. Almost like doing mitt work. So I want it to become essential. Wow. Yeah. And I think... What's really, really interesting, and I ask this question to a lot of entrepreneurs, what is the day in the life of you like? Is it like a lot of training and then maybe half the time focused on your company or is it kind of something different? Tell us more about the day in the life. So success comes, um, I know that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, I have a habit of doing too many things at once. And I realize that if I want to be successful, I have to do this thing over and over and over until, I have to keep laying a brick until I got a full building, you get me? Not go work on another building and lay bricks there. So it's funny, today I actually wanted to take time to focus on some voice acting stuff, but I'm like, this is not exactly where I want it to be. There's phone calls that need to be made. There's deals that need to be struck. Let me get this done with. Um, so my advice is if you're building a building, focus on building that building before you build another one. Yeah, I love that piece of advice. And, you know, I talk to friends who either they became entrepreneurs or they did something else after realizing that they kind of like did too much. And it's the same exact thing. I think about even my journey in life. And, you know, if I had focused on anything earlier, right, I would have been like, oh, I, the people who were with me, who focused, got somewhere. And I, that's such a great piece of advice for everyone. You really... Um, you know, like mm, diversify, but don't do too much, right? Build bricks and maybe I would say at most two or three focus areas and just keep building, keep building, keep focusing on that. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do multiple things, 
you got to do what they did to you in school, different subjects. So for one hour, I'm going to be doing this. For now, another hour, I'm going to do, do, be doing this. You know, you got math class, science class. So if you're going to focus on multiple subjects, you just have to give the proper amount of time and know that it's not going to build as fast as you want it to build if you're so scattered. Yeah, I love that piece of advice. And that's something that I started learning to do. I had that piece of advice in college. People were like, okay, just have a schedule. Have a schedule. Block time. You know, have chunks of time. But I never followed it until recently. The, the uh, uh, Ms. Rona has forced all of us to, like, adapt, right? So I had to learn to block my time. So now yeah. it's like, all right. I'm trying to learn to draw, but I'm not going to get obsessed with it, but I also am not going to f- not do it. So it's like, okay, an hour every day, just an hour every day. And then I move on to something else. Right? Exactly. And it's like, you got to do that or else it, there's t- a tendency for me. I think, like you said, I do the same thing. Sometimes I want to do too much. And then sometimes I want to spend too much time on something that's Doing not the thing, thing I need that- to spend time on. Yeah. I completely understand. Are you a Gemini by any chance? I am a Cancer. Cancer? What day? Yeah, but Cancers get along very well with Geminis. No, what day? What day of Cancer? Um, I'm July 16. July 16. Oh, you're deep in a Cancer. Yeah, uh, I'm okay. the I'm middle Cancer. So we're third decade of Cancer in the week of Pisces. So it means you're a Cancer with like Pisces tendencies. It makes you a little more dreamy and concerned with um the after so to speak mm. that's interesting yeah, you is, struck me is astrology that. something that you do like you consult on the side or something like that i i used to i mean i haven't done it in a while um because i, I just i wanted to study other things but for about 10 years i did astrology wow. and the name healer the mind and body coach came because i used to do like astrology readings and help um i don't want to sound pretentious because I, I really don't like the term life coach. Like, is my life amazing that I got? I can teach you how to live yours? What I can do with an astrology chart is show you, based on your body type, your archetype, things that you tend to do that might sabotage you, mm. right? Um, or cancers. Cancers, they need a lot of water, um, more so than other signs, or it affects their stomach. It affects their digestive system, nervous system, things of that nature. Uh, Capricorns tend to need more iron um, or, and vitamin D, things of that nature that you can, the foods and ways of behaving that will affect your mind and body. That's what I, I mainly focus on. Wow. Wow. That's so cool. And I think one of the important things about entrepreneurship too is also have some interests on the side that you can – always build. So they're not like your main thing. You're not trying to make them feed you, but these are still interests that you can always fall back on when you need time to relax. You can keep doing that. And I think that's what you have. Yeah. And honestly, like I said, it's kind of a problem because if it was up to me, I I would do a million different Mm -hmm. things. I'd be drawing five different comic books at the same time. And at the end of the day, if you can't focus on one thing and get it to where it's successful, Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's kind of pointless, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, another question I like to ask entrepreneurs is, in your entrepreneurship journey, what was some like one mistake or stumble that you made that like looking back, you're like, oh, that was cute and I learned a lot from that. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I tried to, Um. it was actually before the focus ball. I had... I had another idea, um, and I called Invent Help or some some fucking people like that. And what they what I, I didn't realize they were they're a middleman. I thought, hey, this is the guys you call to give your invention to. Uh... It's gonna no, these are dudes who you call them and you tell them what you're trying to invent. They'll draw it for you. And then they'll make a prototype for you. And then they'll go to the office for you, but you're paying them extra fees to do all the stuff that you could have done. I'm like, bro, I have the invention. I have the drawings and all, everything already, but I just gave them my money to kind of take me through these steps of where they're going to charge you more money. Hey, well, now it's time for the, the such and such. You got to pay us. Then 
you pay them that and you move on to the next one and they go, oh, well, now we got to do the, the trial test. So that's going to be an extra uh, getting taken advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Cool. And I think as an entrepreneur, we all will have that experience. We'll all, we all will kind of be like, oh, we wasted our time or we wasted our money. I think we're probably going to stumble at least two or three times before we really start understanding we, we start having quote unquote a bs meter so to speak so yeah it's it's a common thing and it it's it's cool that you went through that i mean it's not cool at the time but i'm sure you learned a lot from that yeah i mean that's why i was able to avoid that's why i felt confident in doing the patent on my own for the first time or at least the provisional one mm -hmm. um yeah the provisional one um because i realized i was about to pay an average joe to do something that I could have done myself. If you just yeah. do a little reading, definitely. That makes you read too. Yeah, it does. It makes you read. It makes you read and also think and ask questions, right? The, the beauty is there's a lot you can, you can get if you just ask the right people. Like even yeah. if you have legal questions, sometimes lawyers will just answer your questions for free. Like some lawyers like to go on Reddit and answer people's questions. So you're like, you can just, if you're reading, you're really meticulous. Maybe you have one thing you're confused about. You can ask on Reddit. Guys, I'm not, this is not a legal recommendation. This is just a general kind of thing that I've seen people do. But, but like they'll ask something on, on Reddit and then like they'll get a really in-depth answer. And it's like, ah, to some people that's enough, right? That's all they need. 